the three count question of the week all right so this one we were kind of starting to discuss last week and then i think we just kind of sidebarred it and we're like you know what let's make this the question of the week next week um because i think tim you were having a hard time deciding <laughs> which of the two things because last week it was zombies or uh, mycrashpad.com which is worse um for the wrestling business but we kind of expanded it a little bit um and it's what is the worst thing that a company can do to expose the business is our is our question of the week so is there anybody that would like to kick us off with their thoughts what Tim? was the question God. i was texting somebody from work God. i will reiterate the question as i non -verk. so having ad non -verk go, go work yourself for commentary go work, go work yourself is the worst thing they could do I'm gonna work 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 <laughs> and um <laughs> So the worst thing that a wrestling promotion could do to expose themselves would... Oh, my. I think probably the most egregious thing that's ever happened, it's a tie between the Montreal Screwjob and whatever shit Vince Russo did to Hogan at Bash at the Beach 2000. If you don't remember... It was Jeff Jarrett versus Hulk Hogan at Bash of the Beach 2000. Jeff Jarrett is the champion. They come in. Jarrett lays down. Hogan puts a foot on Jarrett. The ref counts three. Jarrett stands up, leaves. And then Vince Russo comes out in a... Uh, black Giants jersey. And it's a Giants jersey because you know I'm not work. It's real. Bro. And, bro and basically like takes a dump a steaming dump on terry which back in the day wasn't such a, a cool thing now in 2021 maybe vince russo was a hero i don't know okay but i think the any hero we didn't know we needed yeah the hero we didn't we didn't want but we or we didn't deserve but we got um as i move some of my trash off to the side um yeah, anything that just kind of, like, gives away the magic of wrestling. Especially, like, the endings of matches. Okay. Seeing a crash pad, that's bad production. Using zombies, that's a weird thing. Actually coming out and saying... Actually ringing the bell in a submission hold when the guy obviously didn't give up. Yeah, not 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 good. Yeah, not great. Yeah, definitely not great. Um, I am mine is kind of along those lines, but maybe a little bit different. I I think it's just to me, just kind of any anything that that pretty much like makes it evident that it's quote unquote fake, quote unquote not real. Um, and like things like pulling up the pulling up the canvas or like when you saw Cody down the, the tunnel when he was injured and there's like seven people down the tunnel and they keep looking back at the ring. They're like trying to, you know, figure out where the signal, where the cue is like just, just anything that, and, and maybe it comes down, maybe that's comes down to a production thing, but, it, but, when when the show is being presented in a way that makes it obvious that it's it's not a sport that it's not real because like you you want to present it as real as possible so you know and and i mean zombies kind of go right with it um it's not something you obviously see very often but but yeah just anything that that definitely just makes it evident that uh we got a dog that has a visitor hey <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah anything that just it, it makes it blatantly obvious that that it's that it's not real now which one was that matt was that ursula or cujo <laughs> uh, that was gaston damn it i knew i would remember that so name. close 
So close you on were the right neck, there. Right? Uh, I didn't know how to answer this because I wasn't paying attention. I only got the question moments before we no, went live on air. Didn't. So, you... guys, please, Jim, this is my time. Please do not interrupt. Uh, so, please bear with me for not having a great answer queued up. Uh, the host neglected his hosting duties to inform everybody what to. Uh... Matt, do you have an answer to the question at all? Um, I mean, it's tough. I know what, what we were going for with this, and I don't think that either of the two instances really hurt or kill the business. Like, it, it hurts as a wrestling fan to see that. And like I said on Twitter, like, when people are like, why do you watch wrestling? And then there's moments like the zombie match. It's like, geez, why do no, I watch this. wrestling? This isn't why I watch it. <laughs> but I, I think that like any time you pull back the curtain, you risk any type of like hurting the actual business. So I like as great as the pipe bomb was, I mean, that, that kind of hurt. <laughs> I'm, if you're watching the video, just imagine that what I'm saying is coming out of Ryan's mouth because it's pretty much in sync at this point. Um, and knowing Ryan, like I know him well, um, he would say that anytime, <laughs> <Not the mouth. laughs> anytime Nikki Bella was on screen hurts the business. Um, but I, I would have to agree with the whole Bret Hart first thing. Warning, where you're, That's your first warning. Uh, I got one more. All right. <laughs> um, so I, I would say that the Bret Hart thing is definitely the probably the best example because that, you know, does lead into the whole performance versus scripted versus the, the fake word. Like when you get into something where you're blurring the line that much and just going against what the fans can obviously see. It's not something as blatant as like the shoulder didn't quite get up, but the ref stopped the count anyway. That's like a blatant one. So I'd say that is probably the best example of actually killing or hurting the business. Yeah. And, and that's why celebrities are the biggest reason the, the, the business is exposed. You know, that's, that's actually a really good point, Ryan. Kobe. Um, Tim, backing up to what you said, but to, to sidebar, when you mentioned about Jeff Jarrett, I've actually really been enjoying the My World podcast. Like, I don't know if, any, if anybody's caught any of the episodes of that, but my I listen world, to it every week. My World is the fourth best podcast in the world today. What are the first three? Three Count Thursday. Final right. wrestling. Sorry, sorry. It is the fifth best podcast in the world. Okay. Tied for first is Three Count Thursday, Final Wrestling Place, Viewers Choice, and the Wiz Wit Podcast. Yep. Then it is My World, and then close behind it, tied for third, is Discussions with a Nobody and Huddle Up. Okay. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Followed closely by. Uh, take three wrestling podcast and the earnestly speaking podcast. we don't do those podcasts we are guests on those podcasts and well yeah that's why we're there below and us. isn't Ernest a miami heat fan am i yeah, correct in Ernest. That? because the yeah. other day i saw him saying when we come back to new york we'll be up three games to one speaking about the atlanta hawks so that uh -oh. that uh, uh -oh. Jim, I know how you feel about those types of things. <laughs> hey, Big Jim, how about you do something that you slammed Stephen A. Smith about, and how about you talk about basketball and See, tell us gonna... tell us why the Heat aren't going to make it out of the first round, much like Stephen A. Smith told us why the Edmonton Oilers <laughs> got yeah. swept. Oh my God! With if two of the three leading scores in the <laughs> NHL. Jesus, I'm gonna do the a, hockey. If there was a clip in sports talk this week that I hated more than that, it'd be hard pressed to find one. Doing the hockey. <laughs> oh my God, well, I am impressed that that he did get Leon Drysidle's name pronounced correctly. He practiced it while he was giving the every well, yeah, time but, he said, I mean, he's like, uh, Drysidle. 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 Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, I'm 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 impressed that he that he got the name right. But yeah, I I if I never. Hear Stephen A. Smith talk about hockey again. It'll be way too soon. He practiced Speaking of hockey. Jim, how are the Caps doing? 
Ooh, not uh, not good. Uh -oh. Um, and they're probably not doing as well on the golf course as the Flyers are because the Flyers had a two week head start. No. Oh, that cuts deep. <laughs> well, hey, or at least hey, stings. at least, hey, are you gonna are you, are you gonna I, follow I Ovi? Right. Are you gonna follow Ovi wherever he goes because he's not coming back? Right back to communist Russia, I hope. He will definitely be back in Washington. I'm not. I'm not afraid of that. You want to? You want to? You want to double, triple stamp the double stamp right there? I, I smell a gentleman's bet. Lock it up. Lock it up. He no, said, lock it, up. "Lock it up." No, you lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. I wish we had a lock it up sound effect. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? It would be great. <laughs> be nice. All right. Any other any other thoughts to uh Is it is it Matt gonna go? He did. He went while you were rattling off about whatever, but I really do want to hear your point. I, I do want to hear your point, Ryan. Yeah. Was was your point was your point basically that like celebrities in wrestling expose it as being not a thing? Oh, now he's now he's sad. Now he's sad pants. What does he say? Celebs in wrestling matches. And wow. that's all I wrote down. Okay. So that was that's all I had time for. Okay. But like so that so that that's like every celebrity? Like even the even the bad bun, even the bad money stuff? Um so bad bunny came in and looked fantastic in so what you... two months training? Doesn't that kind of expose how easy this business would be to learn if you actually try? And uh, why I... somebody like Brett the Hitman Hart couldn't ever get it? <laughs> when Bad Bunny can learn in two and a half weeks. You see what I mean? I thought you were going to lean more towards the Arquette yeah, thing, but, but I see both sides of that now, yeah. The I mean, Arquette thing, I've, I've actually earned a ton of respect for. Like, I think, you know, the well, whole, now, you, yeah, I mean, now, now what he's done. And here's the deal. It was, it was, it was, I get why they did it to sell tickets, but it was shit. It absolutely was shit. It yeah. was probably what killed WCW. I mean, well, I mean, to the, to that extent, then, I mean, Tony Khan's definitely taking a page out of the wrestling handbook. That's why Tim Tebow's on the Jags, right? For no other reason than to sell tickets and merch. You know what? So it got works. A how much money? How much money did did Tony Khan and the Khan family have to put on Trevor Lawrence's contract to get him to drop the soundbite? I am excited to be playing alongside Tim Tebow. Oh yeah, that, that had to be a fifteen thousand dollars soundbite, right? Definitely a huge bonus. Like they like they like wrote a check for like fifteen thousand, and he like so they wrote him like another ten. I think what it was, they might have like brought him in, signed the deal. There's and no then... way Tebow makes the roster, though. Yeah, yeah. there is. Oh, absolutely. He oh, does. 100%. Really? He's yeah. Oh, yeah. Selling there, are, right now. there are 53 spots on an NFL roster. Jim, can you please play the uh, merchandising clip? <laughs> <laughs> is that is that all it is, you think? Oh, 100%. Right. Yes. Merchandising. Especially he won the Eagles and didn't sell a single jersey, Especially... I think. Oh, yeah, he did. Did he really? He sold a ton of Eagles jerseys too. Oh, oh, a ton of Patriots jerseys. Yeah, especially everywhere Tebow goes. Didn't oh, know that. Follow. Neato. Yeah. Especially now that the NFL has raised their uh, their leniency on numbers. Yeah. And oh, Tebow yeah, can there. wear fifteen as a tight end. The tightest of ends. Yeah. He's wearing eighty five though. Is he really? Yeah. No, they need to put him in 15. What are they doing? He's wearing 85. Well, He'll they, probably change it before the season. Is there is there a 15 on the team? Sell those 85 jerseys uh, and then sell uh, the 15s. There might be. There might be. That, I'm going to like. Would, that would not surprise me if he if he changed to 15 right before the season and just sold a shitload more jerseys. Yeah, I too. mean, why, why the hell not? Why the hell not? I'm going to look to see. Oh, they're already selling 85 jerseys of Tebow. Yeah. If you go to Jaguars, shop.jaguars.com, there's three jerseys that are promoted in the top for welcome the newest Jaguars. It's Trevor Lawrence, it's ETN Jr., and it's 85 Tebow. Is, is Tebow's on top? No, like, it's Trevor. So it's a, it's, okay. a, it's a diamond. Diamond up Also, diamond upside down is, a, you know. Trevor Lawrence is on top. ETN is the bottom corner here. Or wait, bottom left corner. And Tebow is bottom right corner. 
I gotta look. Yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, it's it's a full gimmick. I mean, it it smart. <laughs> They're making money. I'm looking for the word. Talking about them. I mean, the I mean, Aaron Rodgers hasn't reported to Packers OTAs. And all the and the only thing I'm seeing covered in the NFL. Oh, is Tim Tebow. You know why he doesn't have number fifteen? Who's fifteen? Who you think number fifteen is? Lawrence. Uh, name the Lawrence. only name the only other Jacksonville Jaguar that y'all know right now. Maurice Jones Drew. Travis Atia Jr. No, we just no. Mark Mark Brunel. Current 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 not just drafted Jaguars. Oh, uh, Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew, number 15. Minshew, Minshew mania. Yeah. yeah. Stash of mania, brother. Daniel Day-Lewis. All right, congratulations. We've now turned this in the huddle up. There we go. I'm surprised, well, I mean, they, that... didn't make, surprised they didn't make him change numbers so Tebow could have him. Yeah, they're going to make they're gonna make Minshew take 85. <laughs> I mean, that, that all goes for, full circle, though. I mean, that's why celebs are in wrestling to yeah. sell tickets to and, – and I'm – to an extent, yes, it does expose the business. Much like, I mean, Tebow being on an NFL roster, I will see. Um, but I think Bad Bunny as a wrestler will be better than Tim Tebow as a tight end. Yeah. Probably. I, I think, I, but also, like, celebrities in wrestling goes back. I'm trying to think if there were any celebrities pre like WrestleMania one, the eighties. Well, cause even before WrestleMania, I, I got to look at my dates, but like when was Enoki versus Ali? That would have been, that would have been before 85, right? That would have been before WrestleMania. I feel like that's right. I'm going to look it up. When was Andy Kaufman and Jerry, the King? Oh, that, that's, yeah. Yeah, that was bef- that would have been before WrestleMania. So yeah, I mean it's but like that whole gimmick was supposed to be a farce. Like that was that was the whole Andy Kaufman thing. He was making fun of them. That was 1982. Right. right. It was right, but it, it Kaufman I mean, it was... and Lawler. I really enjoyed that Lawler episode Ali... where they found his uh, his little neck doodad. Ali yeah. and Anoki was. 1976. Wow, okay. Wrestling versus boxing. So we can at least go back to the mid-70s of celebrity involvement. Now, are you, Ryan, are you including, like, athletes in the celebrity realm? Like Jay Leno. Like Lawrence (laughs) Taylor, like uh, Kevin Green. Mike Tyson, are you counting legit athletes as celebrities? Yeah, let's talk Mike Tyson. I think that's one of the most legitimate athletes. You're telling me a bare knuckle Mike Tyson is going to throw a punch and it's not going to have the effect other than a snap in a professional. It's, it's ridiculous. It exposes that it's that it's not real. So even the good ones expose the business. That's fair. So like Floyd Mayweather, all of that is on par with like Stephen Amell. So you have somebody like Anthony Agogo who can murder people by punching them in their liver. But Money Mayweather can swing at Big Show and Big Show it's just like getting punched from Spanky. I don't know. I mean now, that that might be for Big Show just because of the size of Big Show. And His also premium's just that thick. Also, if you go back to that punch at WrestleMania 24, the actual knockout. He had his hand wrapped in a chain or I think he had brass knuckles of some sort. You put on the foil like the Hansons. So he 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 bopped him with a uh, a loaded Wait, like, Gucci bag. He umbopped him then if it was like the Hansons. No, wrong Hansons. Whatever. The Jim Hanson, the puppet that, guy? Yes, that, that one. That Hanson. <laughs> I like talking Hansen. about pizza better than what we're talking about right now. <laughs> Devin, well, this Devin. was your topic. Was Devin. it really? Yeah. Uh, let's fucking move on then. Let's do that. Let's play that song again about uh 1985 or whatever. <laughs> Devin's hot at the Burger King drive there right now. I don't know what the hell's going Dude, on. Dude, Devin, get that fucking chicken sandwich. It's tasty. That new chicken sandwich is delicious. That's a I real good. The, I had the spicy yesterday. I also don't believe it's hand breaded, but uh I'll buy it again. <laughs> 
Oh, I don't. I one hundred percent don't believe it's hand breaded. They're just back there breading the chicken. I mean, it may have been hand breaded somewhere and then frozen and then sent to Burger King, but they're not hand breading it at the Burger. Right. King. There was a hand that turned that machine on that <laughs> breaded the machine. Yes. Yeah, they can call it hand bread. I don't care what they call it. It's fucking delicious. It's real. Um, and uh, I, I did enjoy 